Sanbet Salam, Shabbat Shalom, and happy third day, because the Sabbath, this Sabbath is the third day of the Hanukkah. And what is the significance of the Hanukkah? What's the etymology of the Hanukkah? Well, Hanukkah, accordingly, is the dedication, but more precisely, it is speaking concerning the anointing of the Meshawiyah, the the altar, the altar. Now, why is the altar significant? And what is significant about the Hanukkah season, which is one particular teaching that's very important for us to be reminded of in the connection with, with Maccabees, the book of Maccabees and the four books, not just the two, but the four books, because the Ethiopic book of Maccabees is different than the other book of Maccabees. When we put it together, we have roughly about four books of Maccabees, and there's some interesting detail. That's a whole teaching. That's almost a whole semester right there, the book of Maccabees, but it's significant because the early Rastafari, they bore witness to us of the Maccabees Bible and the, the, the Maccabees. What is the link and the connection with Maccabees? It gives us important keys in overcoming and prevailing in this war against the Apophis, you know what saying, or against the old, that old serpent, that dragon that we call Diablos or the deceiver, the devil, you know what saying, and those disilluminated ones and ones who have sold themselves into slavery, you understand, and have exchanged their name of blessing for a curse. And this is speaking about the black Hebrews vis-a-vis versus the black Greeks and the Hellenized black folks, or what we'll call the black people who are living in the image of the beast. Because the living in the image of the beast is connected with that Hellenistic influence of so-called Greek mythology that has in modern times become metastasized in what we know today as the so-called black Greeks or the frats and the sorrows, you understand, and those black people who have denied their roots and have sold themselves and have exchanged their blessing, their name, and their identity for a curse. Those who are under the spell, some would say, of the Leviathan, you understand, or the Leviathan spell, you understand, or are, are, um, basically I like to use what the scripture says, initially living in the image of the beast. Now, this is very interesting because we have this Sabbath, we're touching on the story of Yosef, Joseph. So I want to remind my brothers and my sisters and those who are studying with us is of the other postings concerning the Amirs, the Amhara or the Afra Amhara kin, the kin of the Amhara. Because what we learn from the Ethiopic Genesis and what we're learning here with Yosef and about to learn, if you have not learned it already, what we're about to learn in this particular sabbatical reading and study that is from Genesis chapter 41 to Genesis 44 and 17 that concerns the, the dream of Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh. And what is interesting and important about Joseph now, the account of Joseph whom Macy, in his work, Ancient Egypt, Light of the Bible, says that Joseph, as a form of the young solar God, or the young solar Elohim, or the young father, he's on the father or the paternal side of the divinity in Israel, who was Eu, or Yo, I-U, or Eu, or Yo. They say the ass-headed Sif, the ass-headed Sif. Now, there's a lot that needs to be explained here, because here is where the symbology gets confused in the hearts and minds of many people, but when we look in the prophetic books of the Hebrews, we see the same symbology, which is explained after the initiation or illumination of the Ibrawiyan or the Hebrews. 
So this is why when we speak about being born again, because they say that the spiritual things are foolishness for the natural man, because the natural man cannot understand it from his so-called natural perspective. He must go to the spiritual. He must be born again. But in order to be born again, that old must die. This is where Maccabees is interesting in the period of Yehuda. Uh, Maccabi or Judas Maccabeus is very important as those Hebrews were resisting the Gentile influences which were corrupting them. You understand or what we call today the so-called uh, Anglo-American or the Eurocentric you understand the Eurocentric mentality or the Aryan mentality. And then as we do the math on it, we begin to see the clear separation, you understand, between our kinsman redeemer and the Antichrist who stood against him and who opposed him. And the, the, the word picture right there is that picture we're seeing in mind with Mussolini, who was representing the Apophis or the Apep, you understand, versus our kinsman and redeemer, Edomawi Haile Selassie, you understand, and an invasion of Ethiopia, which once again is history or the mythos, not just repeating itself, but revealing itself, but also, also progressing. See, there's, there, is, there is a natural progression that happens, but the overarching is the spiritual, is the, the mythos. So we have to understand the mythos. So what we see below, you understand, as Christ says, whatever you bind on earth, you understand, you bind in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. So the natural is important foundationally. You understand, but we have to rise spiritually. You understand, that uprising that we see even on the Baran and Selassie, the Bob Marley cover, that uprising, which is another very important symbol. You understand? And there's a symbolic logic to that that we need to understand, but we can only understand this by studying and showing ourselves approved. So this particular Sabbath, my brothers and sisters, is very, very important. And this particular Sabbath and the sabbatical reading that we know as Miket, Miket in the Hebrew or Bechalam in the Royal Amharic concerns the dream of Pharaoh. The dream of Pharaoh. Now, we mentioned a little bit earlier in the, the previous portion concerning Joseph and this particular dream. And let's see if we can scroll this, scroll this forward to the respective place that Macy says some very important matters concern. Okay, here we are right here. He's talking about this land of corn. It says this land of corn, and we're on page when we're in ancient Egypt, live this world. We're about on page um, 10. But let's go back to page, uh, I mean, page 510. And let's go back to page 509 and see if we can share this right here with you. Now, it says Joseph 509. There's much that is referential here, but in order to explain as we get into chapter 41. And chapter 41, in this particular Sabbath, the sabbatical reading, and this third day of the Hanukkah, is the dream, concerns the dream of Pharaoh. Now, Yosef, Joseph, he is about to become the Adon, or the Aten, over all the land of Egypt, or the, the, the visible symbol, you understand, of the solar Elohim, or, or God the Father's symbol of rulership over the land of Kemet, or the Kam, the land of Kam, the land of, of, of Gupt, the double land, or the double earth of Egypt in the Amenta, in the Amenta. Now, it's important to recognize that in the Egyptian, there are two names for the coming sun. One is the Eu, the Su, or So, or Iusu, or Jesus, Iesus, and the other is Eu, or Iu, the Sif, or Safe, Joseph. Joseph. Now, when the so called wandering Hebrew, or the wandering Jew that was named the, the Cartophiles, the Cartophiles, when they became a Christian, he was called, or he's called Joseph. 
he is called a Joseph and said to have fallen into a trance once every century and to have risen again at 30 years of age. So we began with the last sabbatical study, the last sabbatical study, Yisheb, where Yosef was about 17 years of age. Now we're going to con continue with Yosef at the age of Salasa or at the age of 30. And that is the age that the Harui or the Horus, the chosen, the adult, in his second event, and also of Jesus or Yehoshua in the Gospels, as well as when Yosef or Joseph, when he became the Adon or the Aten over the land of Egypt, Gupt, which is the double land or the double earth of Egypt in Amenta. And Amenta was called the land of the West. Some say the land of the dead. But ironically, we as Beta Israel was sold into the land of the West, the Amenta.